Hi, it's great to have you with us this morning. I'm Tony Fink. I'm the pastor appointed to serve the Pine Island, Minnesota area of the United Methodist Church. And I'm James Miller. I am the online ministry specialist at Pine Island United Methodist Church. Today we hear the story of Zacchaeus. You might remember him from the Sunday School song. Today we will look at how his life was transformed by the love of Jesus from a despised tax collector to a generous benefactor. Truly a life transformed by love. Tax collector to benefactor. You know, I've noticed Jesus never does anything halfway. If he's going to do it, it is a complete and total all-in 180. Really looking forward to hearing that one. And I'm glad you're here to hear it with us, too. We're so glad you connected with us today. If you'd like to say hi to us in the Facebook chat, please do so. I'm here now, and I'll actually respond. It's interactive. But even if you're watching this later in the week, you can still say hi. Just click contact us at the top of the webpage at piumc.org. Um, you could also just click the like button on the Facebook page to let us know that you're with us. And speaking of Facebook, that is where we keep the digital campus. All kinds of cool stuff there. The link is at piumc.org. Yeah. And that's the digital campus. We also have a physical campus, and that's here in Pine Island, Minnesota. So if you ever want to come join us, you can find our address again on our website. That's at piumc.org. There's even directions on how to get here. On Sunday mornings, we gather inside the sanctuary at 9 o'clock. Um, we have a parking lot service at 1030. And then between our two worship services, we have coffee fellowship at 10 o'clock for everybody and also Sunday school for our children and our youth. And we're not leaving you out either. Everybody who's joining us online, stick around from 10 to 1030. We'll have digital coffee hour of our own. Uh, there will be a QR code that will come up at the end of the service, or you can find the link at piumc.org. So don't run away as soon as 10 o'clock hits. Come hang out with me, everybody else for a little bit. We'll have a good time. All you have to do is bring your own coffee, tea, whatever you want. With all that in mind, we're really glad you're here, and we thank you again for joining us for our worship experience this week. Yeah, so now let's all join together. Those of us joining us from online, those of us joining us from the sanctuary, and let us worship our Lord together this morning. Good morning. Welcome to everyone in the sanctuary this morning. Welcome to everyone joining us online. Um, again, I'm Tony Fink, the pastor appointed to serve the Pine Island area. And um, should remind everyone, especially those of you who are joining us online, who we are as a congregation. Um, we are a people who share the love of Jesus, who offer hope to those who are hungering for something to believe in. And we are creating a place for everyone to feel like they belong. So again, welcome this morning. As we begin worshiping our Lord, let us center ourselves as we just reflect on how mighty our God is. So take me as you find me, all my fears and failures, fill my life again, I give my life to follow everything I believe in, now I Say 
Is our God good? All the time. All the time, God is good. Let's stand for our call to worship. This comes from Paul's letter to the Thessalonians. Friends, the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And also with you. Brothers and sisters, we must always thank God for you. This, this is, is only right, right because, because your faithfulness, faithfulness is growing by leaps and bounds. And the love that all of you have for each other is increasing. We are constantly praying for you for this, that our God will make you worthy of his calling and accomplish every good desire and faithful work by his power. Let's continue singing as we sing A Mighty Fortress is Our God. Let's pray together. Lord God of love and peace, open our hearts today to receive the invitation of Jesus to come and be present in our lives. Release us from our self-doubt and create an atmosphere of confession and healing love in our hearts and our spirits. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. And at this point, we want to invite our children forward, for this is where children belong. This, this is where children belong. Welcome as part of the worshiping throng. Water, God's word, bread and cup, prayer and song. This is where children
Well, good morning. Oh, let's try that one again, okay? Good morning. How are we doing today? Well, good. Well, in my backpack today, I have, let's see if I can find it. Oh, here it is. It's a tape measure. That's a crazy thing to have. But what I want to do today is I want to measure how tall we are. Okay? So, um, well, Chris Dietz, funny you should be in church today. Come on up here to the front. Okay? So let's all stand up. Let's see how tall Chris is. Oh, boy. Let's see. There we go. Oh, you look like you're like 74 inches tall. That's crazy. Here, how tall am I? Now let me turn around so you can see the numbers. Ready? Mm -hmm. Let me let go of it. No, here, I'm going to let go of it. You hang on to it. There we go. Oh, here we go. Oh. Let's see, how tall am I? 70 inches. 70 inches. Okay. Oh, well, as long as you're sitting in the front pew, come on up. Yeah, good, th good thing we're wearing our tall shoes. Well, you're about 64, 65. Oh, who's, who's ready here? Ready? Let's see, you're about 44 inches. Oh, you're about the same height. Let's see how tall you are. Oh, you're about, oh, looks like 46. Okay, Lydia, let's see this. Oh, you're about 49 inches. Oh, and you're sitting down. This is going to be short. Here we go. Oh, sitting down, you're about 19 inches. Pretty cool. Are we all different heights? You can go ahead and sit down, Chris. Yeah. So are we all different heights? Oh, let me ask that a question again. Are we all different heights? Yeah. And are some people taller and some people shorter? Yeah. Matter of fact, you guys want to see something cool? Okay, let's go around here to the back of the pulpit. So come over here. Because sometimes we have people that read scripture in church. It's been a long time because we're not inside right now. But I actually have a stool here. See this little stool? And I pull this out because some people, when they read scripture, they can't see over the top, so we bring a stool for them to stand on. So let's go back up to the front. So are we all different heights? Yes, we are. So I have another question for you guys, okay? Are other people taller than you? Yeah. So imagine if you were someplace and you wanted to see what was going on. Let's say, have you guys ever been to a parade? Who's been to a parade? Okay. So imagine if you were at a parade and everybody like Mr. Dietz and... Um, and, and Mrs. Um, um, oh, I, Alberts, yeah, <laughs> Miss Marnie, Miss Mar Mrs. Marnie, um, were at a parade and they were standing in front of you. Could you see the parade if they were taller than you? No. So you'd have to do something to get taller, like maybe stand on a stool or a ladder, or could you imagine climbing a tree? You can't climb a tree. Yeah, so like climb the ladder up to the tree. That'd be the way to do it. Oh, that'd be another way to do it too. That's thinking creatively. So, do you know in the Bible, we hear the story of a guy who climbed a tree to see Jesus? Did you guys know that? There's a song. Maybe some of you know it. Let's, let's sing it for the kids, because I don't know if we sang this at Vacation Bible School, but it goes like this. Zacchaeus was a wee little man, a wee little man was he. He climbed up in a sycamore tree for the Lord he wanted to see. And when that Savior passed that way, he looked up in that tree. And he said, Zacchaeus, you come down, for I'm going to your house today. I'm going to your house today. I don't know, if, have you guys ever sung that song before? No. But that, who's the name of the guy that was in the tree? Zacchaeus, right? I don't know that one. That's, a, that's his name. It's like Savannah. 
but it's Sulpius, okay? And when Jesus saw him, what did Jesus say? He said, Zacchaeus. So did he call him by name? He did. Did he have to say, who's that guy in the tree? Was he like I am, or I have to say, what's your name again? No, Jesus knew exactly that was Zacchaeus, and he called him by name, and you think Zacchaeus was happy? You know he was. He came running down, or he came climbing down the tree, and he went to his house with Jesus. And you know what? Jesus changed his life. So Jesus can change our lives, and he, does he know your name? Yeah, he knows all of our names. So let's have a prayer, okay? Dear God, we thank you for Jesus and how he loves us. Help us remember that you know our name. Amen. Okay. And does he love us too besides knowing our name? Yep. So we got the Tootsie Rolls to remind us of whose love? God's love. That's right. So I'll meet you guys out in front here, okay? Make sure I put this where I can find it for the next time. There we go. Oh, okay, ready? Here we go. Put your hands over here. We're going to make a mess on the floor. Okay, there we go. There we go. Okay. And Rick is going to come forward and lead us in scripture this morning. Good morning. Good morning. My name is Rick Ormsby, and I'm your scripture reader for today. Join me in the prayer of illumination or the prayer of understanding. Lord, open our hearts and minds by the power of your Holy Spirit that as the scriptures are read and your word proclaimed, we may hear with joy what you say to us today. And the scripture lesson this morning is from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 19, verses 1 to 10. Uh, I might just mention that of the four Gospels, that uh, those, uh, if you're just going to start reading the Bible maybe for the first time or the first time in a long time, uh, I suggest you start with the four Gospels. They're the, 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 uh, pretty much what we know about Jesus comes from those four books, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And Luke is kind of unique, and he li really lifts up the, the, the downtrodden, the lowly people, the ones looked down upon, the sinners. And uh, Zacchaeus is a good example of that. Another one is in, in all four Gospels, when Jesus is on the cross, he's uh, got two robbers near him. And uh, the one God, the gospel writer that looks most favorably upon those two robbers is, uh, is Luke. And uh, you can see the Matthew, Mark, and John all say, say a little bit different things about the two robbers. They, they don't coincide, but uh, uh, Luke is the one that has the most favorable views of those uh, sinners. Jesus entered Jericho and was passing through town. A man there named Zacchaeus, a ruler among tax collectors, was rich. Now, my preparation for this, I, I don't know how many times I've read this, probably two or three hundred times in my life, and I, it struck me that he was a, not only a tax collector, but he was a ruler among the tax Am I stealing your sermon? He was a ruler among the tax collectors. That makes him double uh, crit, uh, critical. Uh, that's a negative thing, double, plus he was rich because of that. He was trying to see who Jesus was, but being a short man, he couldn't because of the crowd. So he ran ahead and climbed up a sycamore tree so that he could see Jesus, who was about to pass that way. When Jesus came to that spot, he looked up and said, Zacchaeus, Come down at once. I must stay in your house today, your home today. So Zacchaeus came down at once, happy to welcome Jesus. Everyone who saw this grumbled, saying, He has gone to be the guest of a sinner. Zacchaeus stopped and said to the Lord, 
Look, Lord, I give half of my possessions to the poor, and if I have cheated anyone, I repay them four times as much. Jesus said to him, Today salvation has come to this household, because he too is a son of Abraham. The Son of Man came to seek and to save the lost. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, thank you, Rick. I'm going to talk about chief tax collectors, but I'm just going to touch on it, so thanks for lifting that up. Now, if you were here last week, you might remember that we talked about two people who went to the temple to pray. Oh, pop quiz. Who were they? Pharisee and the? Tax collector. Yeah, the Pharisee and the tax collector. And last week we heard about how everyone hated tax collectors, especially in Jesus' day. And and we learned about how tax collectors sold out their fellow Jewish neighbors to Rome for money. And on top of taking their money and giving it to Rome, the tax collectors would take extra money from their neighbors and keep it for themselves. Okay? And sometimes these tax collectors would end up being really rich. Okay? And they had fancy houses and they had really good looking clothing. Okay? Now this morning we are getting up close and personal with one of these despised tax collectors. And this is the cool thing, we even remember his name some 2,000 years later. But it's not Matthew. Matthew? Well, well, this is how we hear of Matthew in the Gospel of, what what Gospel do you think? Matthew, okay? Imagine that, Matthew had a Gospel, okay? We hear from Matthew 9, as Jesus continued on from there, he saw a a man named Matthew sitting at a kiosk for collecting taxes. So what was Matthew? A tax collector. Jesus said to him, follow me. And he got up and followed him. So, so Rick, did you remember that one of Jesus' 12 disciples was a tax collector? Yeah. Ask the wrong person. Jeremy, you're up next. No, I'm kidding. (laughs) But today, instead of hearing about Matthew, we hear about who? Zacchaeus, okay? Jesus entered Jericho and was passing through town. A man there named Zacchaeus, a ruler among the tax collectors, was rich. So he was a ruler among the tax collectors. Now, a half a generation ago, we used to say it this way, okay? A man there named, was named Zacchaeus. He was a chief tax collector and was rich. Okay, so Jericho was an ancient city, okay, claimed to be the, claims to be the oldest city in the world. Matter of fact, here is the fountain that's kind of in the square there. It says the oldest city of the world, and there's Elijah's Spring Fountain, okay? So the longest continually inhabited city in the world is Jericho because it's, on a, it's, it's located at an oasis in the desert, So it was a center of trade, and and there was some wealth there in Jericho. And there was much money to be made from those Roman tribute taxes. And Zacchaeus was a top dog among the tax collectors. Now, it's my guess that there were a lot of tax collectors back in Jesus' day, okay? But how many tax collectors do you know by name after 2,000 years? Didn't expect to, to two, right? How many? Okay, Chris, extra, oh, here we go. Jeremy, I said you're next, okay? Can you name the name of one of those two tax collectors? Matthew's one. Who's the other one? Anybody? Zacchaeus. Yeah. So, so Zacchaeus, Matthew, he ends up being a disciple of Jesus, right? And Zacchaeus, here's cool. I, I found this out this week. There's a collection of books that were written in the late 300s, okay? They're called the Apostolic Constitutions. And in those books, in one of the books, it tells us that Zacchaeus the publican, okay, and publican is the old-fashioned word for tax collector, Zacchaeus the publican was the first bishop 
of Caesarea. Now, Caesarea is about 50 miles from Jericho. Okay, here's a map for you. See so where Jericho is? You can see kind of the Jordan River going up and down, the desert that's around Jericho, and you can kind of see where it could be an oasis because you see some green there. But then Caesarea is about 50 miles away as the crow flies, okay? Except there's like mountain ranges there, so you have to go up and over the mountain and take all those twists, and it's about 100 miles by car, okay? But 50 miles by, by how the crow flies. Did you, Rick, did you know that Zacchaeus was the first bishop of Caesarea? For, yeah, you learned something new today. Glad you came. Yeah. So is this Zacchaeus, is he starting to sound a little bit more interesting than just this wee little man who climbed a tree? Yes. Thank you for nodding. Yeah. So why? Why is he so interesting? What happened to this tax collector? Well, Zacchaeus is transformed, okay? Now, sometimes when we realize that we are blessed by God, we're thankful, right? Amen? Yeah. And sometimes when we find ourselves thankful for God's blessings in our lives, we can be transformed in how we relate with other people, okay? So he ran ahead and climbed up a sycamore tree so he could see Jesus, who was about to pass that way. When Jesus came to that spot, he looked up and said, Zacchaeus, come down at once. I must stay in your house today. So Zacchaeus came down at once, happy to welcome Jesus. And everyone who saw this grumbled. Oh, he has gone to be the guest of a sinner. <laughs> okay? Zacchaeus stopped, and he said to the Lord, Lord, look, I give half my possessions to the poor. And if I have cheated anyone, I repay them four times as much. What just happened here? Something wonderful and transformative happened in that moment when Jesus called Zacchaeus by name and invited himself to his home for dinner. Oh, wow, another quiz. Yay. Okay, this time it's a math quiz. woo -hoo. Okay, so if Zacchaeus is on a train traveling 60 miles an hour toward a train that Jesus is on, which is traveling 30... No, that's the wrong, that's the wrong math quiz. Okay, here's the right one. Zacchaeus stopped and said to the Lord, Look, Lord, I give half my possessions to the poor. Okay, so what percentage is half. Fifty percent, right? Fifty percent is half. Okay, now think back to the Old Testament. In the Old Testament, what percentage is a tithe? Ten percent. So Zacchaeus is giving how much? Fifty percent of all that he has. So is he giving to the poor reluctantly? or with a joyful heart? What do you think? Joyful heart, of course. Something happened. Zacchaeus was thankful and blessed and joyful and transformed and generous and repentant. Now, in the Gospel of Luke, we also hear time and time again of the need for us to change our hearts and our lives. Okay, that's a common theme that comes out. Notice that Zacchaeus didn't just have a change of heart, but he also had a change of life. What was his job like the week before that day? Zacchaeus was a what? Tax collector. And what did he do? He took money from people. And did he take extra money from people? Was he rich? How do you think he got rich? Okay? He had a change of life. Remember, Zacchaeus stopped and said to the Lord, Lord, I give half my possessions to the poor, and if I have cheated anyone, I will repay them four times as much. Okay, so here's the thing. We've already covered that 50% donation rather than 10%, right? We've already covered that 50% donation to charity. 
And again, that's five times the Old Testament tithe. Oh, that 10% tithe thing? Some people are making the case and have made the case that for us as Christians, Jesus is looking for more than just 10% of our lives. Imagine how this sounds. Oh, Jesus, you're my Lord and Savior. I'll be nice to people 10% of my time. Okay? Or, um, Jesus, you're my Lord and Savior. I, I will have a devotion one out of 10 days to you. Okay? Or I'll be nice to people 10% of the time. Other 90%? Watch out. But is that what we as Christians are called to do? No. The suggestion is that we as Christians go all in 100% for Jesus. Okay, but, but back to Zacchaeus, okay, because I'm meddling here. Okay, I'm getting in your lives. Zacchaeus says that if he has cheated anyone, how much would he repay him? Go ahead, look, it's in the, it's in the Bible passage there and your thing. How much would he repay him? Four times as much. Well, Rick, you read the scripture. You, you, you got the answer. Okay, four times as much. That is 400%. Now, Zacchaeus could make the argument using the law, okay, the law that's found in the book of Numbers and the book of Leviticus, or Leviticus, that if he cheated anyone, he would only be liable to pay back 120% of what he took. Okay, that's, you can look it up. I'll give you the, the passages later on, okay? So what the original sin is plus 20%, okay? A double tithe, okay? But he went beyond what he had to do. And he used the higher figure that's found in the book of Exodus of paying 400%. Something happened in this encounter with Jesus that not just Zacchaeus' heart was changed, but Zacchaeus' life was changed. From a chief tax collector, a ruler among the tax collectors, to a repentant, generous benefactor to those who are in poor. Seems like night and day to me. He had a life that was transformed by the love of Jesus. No? How about you? Is there any evidence that you are living a life that's transformed by Jesus? You know, is your life maybe like that prodigal son who, who returned home from the foreign land? You remember the story, right? He went home and he is greeted by his loving father who ran to him and, and put his arms around him and kissed him and welcomed him home as his forgiven son. Is that your story? Or how about that old hymn, that one that was written by, by John Newton? Of course, you remember who John Newton is, right, from the 1700s? John was a captain of a slave ship. And then he retired from being a captain of a slave ship. You know what he did after that? He started to invest, and he became rich in the business of trading slaves. Okay, and then he went on, he wrote a hymn, again in the 1700s. Remember how, they, how the, verse goes of that, or the verses go of that one? Let me remind you. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found was blind, but now I see. Well, did I mention that, that John Newton had a conver conversion experience and he became a follower of Jesus? Was his life transformed? Yeah. He went from being a slave trader, someone who was rich in the slave trade, to an abolitionist. Okay? I once was lost, but now I'm found. I once was blind, but now I see. I once collected taxes and even more for myself, but now I generously give to those who are in need. I once was a ruler among the tax collectors, and now I'm Christ's bishop in Caesarea. A life transformed. So again, how about you? 
How would your verse, the one that describes your life, go? How would you fill in the blanks? I once was, and now I'm... How would you fill them in? Talking about a life transformed by the love of Jesus for you. I got some that worked for me. See, I once, back when I was in high school, once was trying not to break the rules. And now I'm doing what's right to please Jesus who loves and saved me. I'm transformed by the love of Jesus. Okay? I once had my life planned decade by decade with another career, thinking I'd give God a couple hours on the weekend. And now I'm serving Jesus full time in my calling. I'm transformed by Jesus' love for me. I once was really good at making snide comments about others, okay? And now I mostly refrain from doing so, and I ask for Jesus' forgiveness when I fall back into those bad habits, okay? Because I have a life that's transformed by Jesus' love for me. So, so how would your verse, the one that describes your life, go? How would you fill in the blanks? I once was, how did you used to be? And now I'm, how are you now? As a result of being transformed by the love of Jesus for you. How would you fill in the blanks? Everyone who saw this grumbled, saying, he has gone to be the guest of a sinner. Zacchaeus stopped and said to the Lord, Lord, look, I give half my possessions to the poor. And if I have cheated anyone, I repay them four times as much. Jesus said to him, today salvation has come to this household because he too is a son of Abraham. The son of man came to seek and save the lost. Friends, Jesus came for you. Jesus, because he loves you, has saved you. Is your life a life that's been transformed? Transformed by the love of Jesus? Are you able to truly sing this hymn verse? It kind of goes, When you call me by my name, let me turn and follow you and never be the same. In your company I'll go where your love and footsteps show. When Jesus came to that spot, he looked up and said, Zacchaeus, come down at once. I must stay at your home today. What happens when Jesus calls your name? Now, we have a response hymn here. And Joel, we've been talking about this for weeks, about a month. It's going to kill you guys, okay? Because this is what's going to happen. It's called the summons. And it's written in such a way that the first four verses you have to listen to. You can't sing. Joel's going to sing them to us, okay? And Joel is going to sing, and as you hear Joel's voice, just imagine Jesus singing to you, okay? And then verse 5 is a chance for you to respond if you want, okay? So after listening to the first four verses, if you can, stand and sing on verse 5. You sing, okay? And even if you're called or feel the movement, stand as you sing that fifth verse of the summons. Will you come and follow me if I would call your name? Will you go where you don't know and never be the same? Will you let my love be shown? Will you let my name be known? Will you let my life be shown in you and you in me? Will you leave yourself behind if I but call your name? Will you care, cool and kind and never? 
wonders free and never be the same. Will you kiss the leper clean and do such as this unseen and admit to what I mean in you? ahead and be seated. As a, as a gathered people, are there any joys or concerns you want to lift up this morning? Do you have any? Yeah, Rachel? Mm-hmm. Okay, so Dan Coons, who's going through some medical issues. Any others? Um, Jerry Beckman gave me a call this morning. Um, Jerry um, had a fall last week and had to go to the hospital. Um, a member of our congregation was able to pick him up from the emergency room and bring him home. Um, but Jerry is, is feeling okay, but didn't feel strong enough to make it to church this morning. But let's keep um, Jerry in our prayers. Yeah, Joe? So for, for, yeah, so for Joe's sister, sister-in-law, Anna, as she's going through some difficult times, um, and for your brother also as he cares. Yeah, they're down in Florida, so you can't just swing over with a hot dish. Yeah. Any others? Um, before the service, it just um, warmed my heart that... Um, as, as people were, were coming in, they would talk to, to Jimmy Bartholomew. And Jimmy, are you, they were saying, how you doing? Are you ready for tomorrow? So Jim goes in for um, knee replacement surgery tomorrow, so we want to keep Jimmy in our prayers too. Well, let's um, turn to God in prayer. Gracious God, as we come to you, help us to hear you call our name. Help us respond to your love and your grace that saves us. Help our lives to be transformed, that we might more fully live into the image and the vision that you want us to be. And gracious God, that, that image is part of what we're doing now as we pray for people, as we lift up people to you. We, we think of Jerry Beckman as he recovers um, or the names that we just lifted up earlier for, for Cheryl Finnegan, as she um, has multiple health issues and doctor's appointments coming up. For Fern, as she continues to remain in the hospital. Lord, we, we give you thanks for all those who've had surgeries in the last couple weeks, Odell and Christian and Dawn and John, and for the recoveries that they're making and for Harold sinning. Gracious God, just... Just have your grace be with Harold and Mike in their house right now. 
Gracious God, I, I can't imagine the grief that fills the streets of Seoul today as accounts were of about 150 young people who died in the crushing crowd. And then of all their families going to the hospitals and the morgues looking for their children. Lord, just send your grace among these people. Be with our United Methodist Church that is so strong in Korea. Help our brothers and sisters in Christ to minister to all these people. Lord, we give you thanks for the harvest that surrounds us. We ask a special prayer upon our farmers and all in agriculture who work with us. And Lord, keep them safe. And Lord, we lift up our, our Pine Island firefighters who seem to have gone out more often than not this week. Gracious God be with them. Lord, we lift up our denomination. We, we lift up our greater church as we gather together our representatives for a jur jurisdictional conference this coming week. Lord, be present. We know you're present, but be present in ways that you can be felt and seen as we gather and make decisions about who our new bishops will be. Lord, be with all the people that we've lifted in prayer this week, previous weeks, all those that we know that, that need help. And gracious God, be most with us. Help us to have a life that's transformed so we will be your hands and feet in ministry with all we pray for. Lord, we ask this in Jesus' name and all God's people said, amen. Well, as we continue this morning, um, we're going to have some music for us to consider God's blessings for us, Jesus' love for us. Um, but maybe think some more about how you'd fill in those blanks. I once was, but now am, because of Jesus' love for me. Gracious God, your blessings to us are bountiful. They, they flow from our hands onto the floor. They flow from our hearts into the lives of others. So we give you thanks for all that you've given us. And Lord, let us be a Zacchaeus and joyfully give what we have with others, with those who are in need, with anyone 
who needs our help. And let us share our faith freely, the faith that has been given to us for free, paid for by you. So gracious God, bless these gifts. Let them be used not just in Pine Island, but around the world. Lord, bless our lives that they might not be used just in our own households, but in our wider community. Bless us and allow us to be in ministry in Jesus' name. Jesus, who taught us to pray, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. You may be seated. Um, a couple of announcements this morning. Again, I want to remind you that we are having our annual church conference on Monday, November 14th at 6 o'clock. This is a Zoom meeting. Um, when I get the information for Zoom, we'll, we'll pass it out to everyone. Everyone in church has voice and vote at this annual meeting. Um, also, um, we're doing something special this year. We're having what's called an Undy Sunday. An Undy Sunday. We're going to be working with the public school with our Holiday Helpers program. And um, I don't know if we got volunteered or we've volunteered ourselves, but we have been volunteered or volunteered to collect underwear, um, underwear, socks, um, and we're gonna be helping, we'll be helping, again, the Holiday Helpers Program. Um, we're gonna be collecting those November 6th, November 6th, 13, and 20, and then we'll be bringing those down to the school. Um, also want to let you know that um, if you haven't got your newsletter online, it's available online at our website. There's also a couple extra copies that are printed up that are on the back table. Um, thanks for your donations for the um, produce table. Um, I think about $165 has been collected as of later this week. So thank you guys for that. Um, flowers, we still have flowers from Lorraine's funeral, so we continue to, to think of Lorraine and Gosh, it's kind of nice that the flowers kept good for another week. So we have another week of, of remembering how Lorraine has touched our lives and the lives of so many in our community. Um, as I mentioned before, um, this week is a big week for United Methodists in the North Central jurisdiction. Okay, so the North Central part of the United States. We have our ju jurisdictional conference. I think it's in Fort Wayne, Indiana. Um, but our representatives are meeting November 2nd to the 5th. Probably the biggest item of business is selection of new bishops for the church. So um, pray for those folks that um, wise decisions will be made. And speaking about wise decisions, I hear that there's an election coming. I, my dad was visiting. I saw the TV ads because I usually don't watch TV. Have you guys seen those ads? It's like there's an election coming. Um, election day is November 8th, okay? Um, if we'd be in Chicago, I'd say vote early and vote often, okay? But I'm not. So what I'm saying is make sure you vote, whether it's on the 8th or early and when you vote, remember to live out your faith. You know, think about your faith as you make your decisions for our elections. And um, also, I was listening to a sermon this morning that was given last week, um, but it reminded me of all the families that are split because of politics in our country. Um, it used to be, you know, if you're a Lutheran, you couldn't marry a Catholic, right? Now, if it's you're a Democrat, you can't marry a Republican or vice versa. And um, there's a divisiveness in politics I think we have to do something about. And I don't know, but I don't think the politicians are doing much about it. So it's up to us. So again, election day is coming up on the 8th. Vote your faith. Um, again, thank you for worshiping with us. Thank you for everyone in the sanctuary. Thank you for all of you online, those of you who will be watching later this week. Um, we are so glad that you joined us. And as we get sent out into the world, let us stand and join together in our breakthrough prayer. Let's pray. Holy Spirit, break through to renew and revive our church, unleashing new life. Empower us to proclaim the good news of Jesus' resurrection and the promise of abundant eternal life. 
transform and boldly use us without limits, delays, or excuses to reach new people, to make new disciples of Jesus Christ, and to transform the world. Amen. And let us sing of a day of new beginnings. Our dismissal comes from Paul's second letter to the Thessalonians. Let's receive this blessing. We are constantly praying for you for this, that our God will make you worthy of his calling and accomplish every good desire and faithful work by his power. Then the name of our Lord Jesus will be honored by you and we will be honored by him. Go in peace. Serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.